three weeks till the first round of the French presidential election. And if you think the right is in turmoil, spare a thought for the left. Wednesday, former socialist prime minister Manuel Valls confirmed he won't be supporting the candidate of his own party, Benoit Hamon, who beat the more moderate Valls in the socialist primaries. Instead, in the name of stopping the far right, Valls and several other socialist bigwigs are endorsing François Hollande's former economy minister, Emmanuel Macron, who's running as an independent. Does Macron's neither left nor right mantra ring true? Or do these endorsements make him, well, an old school socialist in disguise more broadly? What's become of the French left? that won the presidency and parliament five years ago. Where are its voters today? And the crisis, is the crisis in the Socialist Party about France? Or is it symptomatic of a broader disenchantment with the social democratic way of dealing with globalization? Much of what we're about to discuss may, by the way, sound familiar to those wondering about the fate of Britain's Labour Party, the German SPD, or the Democrats in the United States. Today in the France 24 debate, uh, we're looking at, at uh, the turmoil inside of the Socialist Party. With us, Daniel Cornalba, Secretary for International Affairs for the Youth Wing of the Socialist Party. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Welcome back to Axel Tessandier, National Delegate for Emmanuel Macron's En Marche movement. Is, is it a movement or a political party? What is it exactly? It's a movement. It's a movement, okay. But you're fielding candidates in the legislative elections. Sorry? But you're fielding candidates in the legislative elections. Yes. Okay. You can do both, you know. All right. <laughs> Majid Misaouden is with uh, is a city councillor in uh, the par in the northern Paris suburb of Saint Denis. Good evening. Member of the Party of the Left. Yeah, of the left of the Socialist Party. To the left of the Socialist Party, uh, yeah. a party which has an alliance with uh, the Communists. Yeah. Uh, and backing Jean Luc Mélenchon for president. We'll talk more about him later. The France Twenty Four debate on Facebook and on Twitter. The hashtag F Two Four Debate. Last week, it was uh, François Hollande's defense minister. Now it's his former prime minister, both ditching the president's party in favor of Macron. I don't think we should take any risks for the country. And so I will vote Emmanuel Macron. With enthusiasm? No, I'm taking on my responsibilities. This isn't about love for the candidate. This is about being reasonable. Inside the Socialist Party, there's bitterness, there's finger-pointing over this. Rebecca Rossman has more on the fallout. It's a major blow that came from one of their own. On Wednesday, Socialist former Prime Minister Manuel Valls announced he would be supporting centrist presidential candidate Manuel Macron in favor of Socialist Benoit Hamon. Socialist Party members immediately reacted in anger. Everyone now knows what the word of a man like Manuel Valls is really worth. Nothing. He's not a man who sticks to his word. One word to describe Manuel Valls' behavior this morning. Lackluster. Standing beside Amon, former First Secretary Martine Aubry called for the party to unite. When someone isn't true to their word, when a person's values and ideas come second, and instead personal interests and desire for power come first, that's when the rest of us come together. But some defend Valls' decision. La réalité. The reality is that it's not really Manuel Valls who chose to vote for Emmanuel Macron. A huge part of the socialist electorates has chosen to vote for Macron. So to insult Valls is to insult voters, and that's not a smart decision. Christophe Cambadelis, the first secretary of the Socialist Party, published a letter on the matter, putting many feelings into words. Who could believe our candidate would have to deal with this new saga? A saga without a clear ending. Daniel Colaba, what's your reaction to Manuel Valls endorsing Macron? I do believe if we want people to believe actually in politicians and politics, we need to be sincere, to be honest, to stick to the word we said. And he said after, well, during the primaries, he would be supporting the candidate that would win. The candidate who won was actually Benoît Hamon, and Manuel Valls lost and decided to endorse first Benoît Hamon. Now we see that he finally wasn't actually saying what he thought or not doing what he said he would do. 
Um, I don't think that's the good way to deal with politics, and it's not a good way also to convince people that actually democracy and politics can change their life, because politics is not only about the personal interest of a person, a new advisor or someone else, it's about the life of the people, and so I would like to speak also about what our candidates are proposing and not just, well, every single day on these sagas of people from the right or people from the left that are actually calculating in their own interest and saying, well, maybe for my career it would be better to be with François Fillon or to be with Emmanuel Macron. So I do believe we need to be sincere. You're in talking politics. about issues and not people so much. But but let me ask you, 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 yeah, heard, you, you saw in that report uh, one supporter of Valls, a member of parliament, saying uh, that, uh, well, don't chastise people because they want to vote for for Macron. What, 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 what do you think? Should Manuel Valls uh, be expelled from the Socialist Party? Well, I think I'm not the one to say that if one has to be expelled or not. I think the rule was quite clear. Well, within a party, it's to say that you endorse the candidate of your party. So he didn't. So I think he, from his own, should well have all the conclusions to say that if I'm not endorsing someone else, I shouldn't be part of the party. But it's, I think, his own decision and the party will see. But I, I don't think it's the main issue. Actually, the, uh, many voters say, I don't know for whom I will vote because I don't want far-right extremism to lead in France. But actually, the, I do believe that through this kind of um, doing, you actually enforce the Front National, at least because people will be disgusted about politics and not vote anymore. And that is a way also of mathematically increasing the force of the Front National. So stick to your values, stick to what you believe in. And actually, that's also why I'm supporting Benoît Mont, because not only is he, I think, a man that is humble, a good man, but also has he a program that is actually tackling the problems of the people. All right. Uh, the, the, let me, a lot of points there, and I want to get our, the rest of our panel to react. First of all, Axel Tessandi, your reaction to this endorsement? Uh, yes, it's, it's not really an endorsement. It's just a political leader saying, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my vote to Emmanuel Macron. It's his choice. It's not, it doesn't change anything for us, you know. As we, we started this uh, adventure, this crazy bet 10 months ago, uh, we started, we didn't know who would be the candidate of the left, the candidate of the right. Uh, for us, it's just uh, we are building our, our program, our movement, our campaign. It doesn't change anything for us. But me, I have a question for you. What do you think it means for your party? Like, what, do, what does it mean that you cannot gather people around one candidate. What does it mean about the primary? What does it mean about the ideological, I don't know, like line? I think it's more about that. First, we have our line. We have our movement. We have the contract with the nation. We have value. We have a project. And it's exactly the same mm. since months. I do think it's a very good question to ask actually about the line, the political line, because I do think we have one that is quite clear. If people vote for us, they know they have the left, a left policy to change their life, to tackle, for, exa for example, climate change, to tackle tax the... havens, for instance. So that's very concrete. What about speaking, the socialists? Uh, sp speaking about the line of Emmanuel Macron, I'm wondering actually, because going on the right when he sees Fillon is yeah, not quite new. well, going or trying to go to the left no, when he sees that François Hollande is not candidate, I do believe he d does not have a clear line actually. No, it's because it's new for you. I understand it's because we think about the left and the right since 50 years, even more. So when you have something very new, very disruptive, it's very hard to understand at the beginning. It's called innovation. Mm -hmm. It's called moving the line. Yeah, you know, if you ask many, many French... Okay, but, the, but, but you heard there the, 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 this disruption within the party. It's yes, tearing it, apart the socialists. Is an endorsement from Manuel Valls going to help or hurt Emmanuel Macron? We, because there might be many left-wing voters who were going to vote for Macron might think, oh, who, he's being supported by a man with... with, with uh, Who's, who's thinking more about personal ambition than about policy? We, we don't, I mean, I don't know why Manuel Valls, I think it's because of its value, it's because of a kind of a responsibility it feels in front of the National Front and, and Marine Le Pen. But for us, again, me, I'm doing another campaign. You know, yesterday I was in Bordeaux with the members of, uh, of En Marche. I had 200 percent in front of me. Not one person asked me about Manuel Valls. We talk about education, entrepreneurship, diversity. This is a story about the Socialist Party and the, the state of the Socialist Party. But for us, it's, it's a totally another story we created months ago.
Majid Nasseruddin, you're not a socialist. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, what, what's your view of, of, of what's going on? I mean, the Socialist Party has always been, just for viewers to understand, it's always been a big tent yeah. with uh, social democrats, uh, yeah. mainstream, Leftists. and the, some that are yeah. far to the left. Uh, that, that big tent, though, seems to be falling apart right yeah. now. And is uh, that a good I, or I, bad I, thing? I, I think we, 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 uh, we are seeing the end of the Socialist Party as we know it since... Uh, many years. Um, and I think that Benoit Hamon is just uh, a sign that uh, the Socialist Party will not, will never govern at his left. Uh, and I think that uh, if Manuel Valls uh, You sound uh, like endorses, critics of, of Jeremy Corbyn in the UK yeah. saying, oh, he's taking the Labour Party too far to the left. Yeah, but I think uh, that the, the future of the left, of the Socialist Party, should not be uh, on... On, on the right, that it's it's uh, now what we can uh, uh, see uh, if we make uh, if we we can, if we look at what did François Hollande the last five years, and I think that Benoît Hamon, uh, he he's sincere when he says that uh, he wants uh, uh, a left policy for France, but I think that the the main problem of Benoît Hamon is the Socialist Party, and I think that um, he should have get rid of it. Uh, to be uh, to be competitive at this uh, uh, presidency, and I think that Manuel Vaz is just has a project for the next presidency. For himself. Yeah, yeah no, of course. No, but like, like like many like many people. Well, let me but get, but let me what, get. what what kind of project for himself? Emmanuel Macron was very clear. He will not govern with him. But he will not be in the next. He's, he's the thinking next of the next. Well, exactly. You are presidency. not talking about the. Be the sincere. Be sincere. You, sincere. you, you know. Be, you know sincerely I'm, that Manuel Valls is also someone not. who, since two thousand eight or even before, was a man who also uh, very often took decisions for his own in his own interest. Yeah, but when during he was in the I'm opposition. At the I don't so care. Please, I, no. I can just stop one thing. So I think. And it's quite clear that he did that. This, he took that decision in his own interest. In a calculation, I do believe, might it be for 2017 it, or it 2022? It can't be to oppose the National Front. The, the yeah. argument that uh, he uh, uh, gave yesterday, uh, or two days ago, I, I don't remember exactly, when he said that he wants to oppose the National Front, nobody can believe that. Because during his uh, mandate uh, as yeah. uh, uh, Minister of Interior or Prime Minister, he several times talked like the National Front, uh, when he talked about Muslims, when he talked about the Roms population. So we can't believe that uh, his objective, his goal is to oppose the National Front. I think that he has a, a personal destiny that he wants to achieve. But we do see a We do see a lot of left-wing voters who are saying, I like Amon, but we have to rally because otherwise if we splinter the vote, we're going to have the conservatives versus the far right That's the problem in the May 7th Republic. Uh, in the That's May 7th runoff. No, because you, it's a two round personally, system, the president. Personally, I won't vote for anyone at this presidential election. I won't, I won't You won't vote, vote for anyone. I won't vote for anyone. Now, the <laughs> argument there is that the lower the turnout, the better it is for the far right. Exactly. No, I, I, I don't accept this argument. Uh, you don't accept that argument? I don't accept this argument. Explain. It's a fact. It's, uh, since 30 years, the Socialist Party, and the, the, the right wing, the right, uh, uh, the right wing, are saying that um, they are both alternatives to each other. So they share the, the power since 30 years, with, That's why with which results, no, no resource, especially for the social, for the working class neighborhoods mm. where I live. None of the candidates today take into account these. Issues. They do. None of them. They do. None of them. I was None of them. Where I is Emmanuel? Where, where is Emmanuel no, Macron tonight? No. When where I, is when Emmanuel Macron? Mac when I say taking into account, it doesn't mean just go and leave. Did it you, means take did you into the account in the program. Did you read the program? We have seen nothing about the working class do you know, neighborhoods, do you know where especially I meet, about our issues. Do you know where I meet Emmanuel Macron? The first time I met him two but years ago, one years ago. It's not enough. Is that enough? It's it was not a, enough. You don't even know. You don't. It's you don't not enough. It the was that proud of our talents, yeah, and he was only with people yeah, but from the, the, uh, the question. Super the question is not about our personal view, of personal life of who we met and no, where we met Benoît right. Hamon. Because Macron. you don't talk. You don't talk about the presidential election no. since five minutes. You no, talk no. about the future of no, the socialist um, no, party. No, I'm sorry. And can can I just finish my point? Can I just finish my point? I do agree with this analysis to say that during 30 years, 
right or left gave the impression that you might have a speech during the election. In the end, you're leading a policy that is... You're leading a policy that is... Please, can I just finish my point? So you are still leading a policy that is not changing the life of the people, especially, as you said, in the neighborhoods. And my problem with Emmanuel Macron is actually that is his proposal, his program, is just the, continu the continuation of these policies during 30 years. And we see it actually, the people from the right and from the left that are coming to you are actually the old white man that is that we're always so proposing the same things. Think, and I do think, and just I finish with that, I do really think that the only one who actually tried something new, new proposals, was Benoit Hamon. With, for instance, this guaranteed income for everyone in France, that was a new idea. Uh, he was idea proposing no, a new no, idea. Well, we can debate I, about that. You know, I used to live six years in San Francisco, and the universal, universal yeah. revenue come from there. Yes. So it's not, a, it's not about it's left, it's come from, yeah. it's come from libertarian. Yeah. You, Absolutely. You, you I heard about it during countries. six years. Yeah. But I think that no, no, I have a question for you. Just to make you, you agree, no, I no, think that... Sorry, I, I'm so going to have to interrupt <laughs> everyone. Unfortunately, we have to take a very quick break, but don't worry, we'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.